Welcome back to another edition of the Gadget Lab podcast. I'm Michael Calori, and who the hell is this guy? I am John Phillips, the new Gadget Lab editor. Wow, I'm glad somebody told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John started uh, at Wired this week. How do you like it? I love it. It's a, it's a trip. It's a culture shock. Um, uh, slowly getting acclimated, and, but I'm enjoying everything. Uh, and your first day, uh, we had some pretty big news, which was? That's right, iPhone 4S. Oh, and by the way, why are you wearing those glasses? <laughs> These glasses are protective glasses for a laser I'm going to show off in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Wait, so you're saying there's a, a laser in the iPhone? No, there's not a laser in the iPhone. There's a laser <laughs> right here. There's okay. a lot of other cool stuff in the iPhone, uh, iPhone 4S, which was the big news this week. Um, are you going to get one? I am getting one tomorrow, so I'm going to wake up ASAP, hustle down to Stonestown because I think I have a better chance of getting one quicker at Stonestown rather than downtown Apple Store. Right. And uh, we have we have a luxury of uh, several Apple stores within the uh, metropolitan area and suburbs of San Francisco. Right. So, so m my go-to is Stonestown. It's just a little bit more out of the way, obscure. It mm -hmm. should work out well. I'm more of a Berlin game man myself. Oh, yeah. Uh, or uh, San Mateo, I want to say, has one. Yeah, sort of. Um, so is that, is that something you'd recommend people do? Like if you live in a big city, maybe not try to go to the big one where you know all the fanfare is and all the TV cameras are, maybe go to a smaller store? Yeah, I mean, especially if you live in San Francisco, everyone is going to go down to the downtown store, uh, not only to get the phone, but just to be part of the big you know, shindig of waiting in line and you know, talking about your new phone, getting excited about what it's going to offer. So um, what are you excited about what it's going to offer? Okay, so I am buying the phone. Uh, so number one, I'm excited about Siri, which is the voice recognition software. And uh, so you, everyone's probably seen this already, but you could uh, turn on uh, Siri, ask her a question, her, it, I don't know what we <laughs> want to call it, ask Siri a question. And uh, with uh, pretty amazing uh, accuracy or clarity, uh, the computer, in effect, will uh, speak back to you or response. So that's what the big deal is about. Me, personally, I want it for text messaging. So I'm one of those guys, I cannot do the thumb texting. I need to tap it out. That doesn't work. My life is all autocorrection hell. And so what I'm looking forward to is uh, just simple voice control where I could text out a message and, uh, and do this repeatedly during the night when my girlfriend is at home and I'm at home and she refuses to use uh, a telephone. It all has to be text, so that's so you can, really you why can, I'm buying it. You can dictate to the phone and then you can also have Siri read back the messages that's, to you. You know, that's a good question. I don't, I want to be able to dictate but, also, but read back myself. All right, well, I guess we'll find out pretty we'll, soon because we'll you're getting out. one to, uh, on Friday. On Friday. And uh, it also has a killer improved camera, so that's right. exciting. It's going up to 8 megapixel. It has a much better low lighting uh, response, so you can, you know, when you sh use your current iPhone 4, you shoot it in a room like a studio uh, like this when the lights are turned down, you, you don't get anything. And so hopefully the new camera will allow for uh, much better uh, image quality in low light situations. So you can look forward to seeing a lot of pictures of John speaking into his phone in low light <laughs> situations on Gadget Labs coverage. That'll be awesome. Uh, and also, you can read our full review of not only the iPhone 4S, but also the accompanying update to iOS 5, which is for um, the most recent iOS devices, so uh, iPhones and, and iPads. Right. Uh, and you can read both of those at uh, the product review section of Wired. So now I think it's time you put on those uh, cheesy glasses and tell us all about <laughs> right. this laser. Well, I think you need to put some on too, is that okay. right? Let's, let's pause for a second and put on our protective gear. Okay. These are our stupid dorky glasses, <laughs> and that is a really cool laser. Right. So, okay, so this is the Wicked Lasers Krypton. It, this model is a one watt green laser. And so laser pointer you might get at the hardware store is going to be three milliwatts. This is one full watt. Uh, it is notorious for looking like a lightsaber. It does look like a lightsaber. It looks very much like a lightsaber, <laughs> and uh, Wicked got in a little bit of trouble, if only briefly, for it looking like a lightsaber. Uh, but the real uh, cool factor of it uh, is um, very apparent when you turn it on. So it has safety locks on it. So this is how you do it. You hit this button, and that sort of loads it. 
and then you have to hit a sequence of uh, touch commands to actually turn it on. Oh yeah, I see it blinking at you so now. So it's blinking, and uh, the commands are uh, three quick taps and then two long ones. So let's try it out. Okay. There it is. Right when it turns on, it starts strobing. To get rid of that, you could do a tap. And then to turn it on to full strength, and keep in mind, this is about 20% strength. We're going to, about to turn it on to 100% strength. That's 100% strength. That's spectacular. So I'm going to just shoot this around a little bit. What are you doing with this? Okay. Are you killing ants? You could kill ants very quickly. And there, there's a whole subculture <laughs> of, that. of laser enthusiasts. And if you're a hardcore laser enthusiast, you're going to use it for balloon popping experiments. And, uh, and action figure experiments, and so you can burn... Uh, I can't imagine what you could do with an action figure with that. You can burn our friend's hand pretty quickly with it if you wanna, uh, if you wanna destroy your action figure collection. Um, bloom popping, you could set off, you could light matches. There are a few practical applications for something like this, so if you're running a search and rescue mission, uh, I'm on one ridge and you're on another and we're looking for a third person who's lost in the wilderness all the way over there two miles. If I see that person, I could literally point to that ridge and get on a walkie-talkie and say, Mike, we found him. And then you're saying, well, where do I go? <laughs> and I say, follow the beam. Right. Um, and yeah, and if you are worried about getting lost in the wilderness, you could take this with you outside. Uh, according to Wicked Lasers, it has a range of 85 miles. And so you could actually hit things in space with uh, this beam. It is a very dangerous device nonetheless. It will burn things. If you hold it on your, uh, on your skin for any prolonged exposure, you'll feel the heat very quickly. Um, and of course, if you aim it in someone's eye, you're gonna cause retinal damage. Uh, blindness, so what, in other words. What happens if you aim it at an ant? Let's say just in my kitchen, for right. example. The ants, it, it's, it's gonna stop and, and immediately die. And okay, then I like that. And very quickly shrivel up. Okay, right. even better. Right. Serves as a warning to all the other ants in my kitchen. Right. Um, you know, I have an ant problem. I, this might be my solution. <laughs> right, what do you, how do you feel about spiders? Uh, spiders are cool. I'm cool with spiders. Okay. What's up with these um, with these little lenses you have here? Okay. So the lenses, if you want to buy an optional kit, I think it's twenty nine dollars. You could screw on these lenses right on top there, and uh, essentially they're special effects lenses. So one lens uh, takes the beam and spreads it out over a wide plane. Another lens takes that same effect but doubles it for sort of like a cross pattern. Um, and then one lens, I think it might be called the starlight filter sort of creates a hundred or more mini laser lights. Uh, in effect, you shine it in the sky and it looks like you have a thousand points of light. Um, and then there's a few lenses that sort of have a more dispersing effect, so you could use the laser almost like a flashlight. Mm. So yeah, it's a pr crazy piece of technology, really expensive. It's a thousand dollars a watt, so it's a thousand dollar device. It's but, a dollar a watt. Yeah, sorry, it's right. Dollar a watt, thousand dollars for this particular model. And um, you know what? I think it's less expensive to buy that than to continue buying Raid for the rest <laughs> of my life to kill the ants right. in the kitchen. And so much more fun. Right. Anyway, that is the Wicked Lasers Krypton. Uh, now we're going to go out to the park and look at a, a couple of Wicked Party devices that do not involve lasers, sadly, but does involve some cool technology. Gotcha. This is the Double Nest Hammock by Eagle's Nest Outfitters. It's a 100% uh, nylon, measures about six feet in width by nine feet in length, so you can fit two people in it comfortably. It uh, holds up to 400 pounds and packs down to the size of a softball and weighs about 22 ounces. So if you want to go backpacking, you can stick it in your pack, or if you just want to hang out in the park, you can drag it along with you. The Double Nest costs $64.95, but it's a lot easier to set up with the optional $20 straps, basically nylon webbing that you can wrap around a tree and then clip to. And it's a lot more comfortable than sleeping on the ground. It's really strong. I've had no problems with it, except for having to find the right distance between two trees to set it up to the right height. A few things go with a hammock, like a nice cold beer. The problem is, if you've got an open beer in your lap when you're in a hammock, it's not going to be long before it ends up all over the place. 
which is why Stanley's 1913 carbonated drink holder comes in so handy. It comes with domed ends so it can handle the pressure of holding a carbonated drink and a wide mouth opening for easy pour. And it makes for a lot more mess free drinking. So this guy runs for 28 bucks and uh, it's basically the classy man's brown bag. Hi, Christina. Hi, Mike. What you got there? Today, I've got the Grid 10 tablet from Fusion Garage. Now, this tablet has kind of a funky history, right? It does. So Fusion Garage made this funky Juju tablet last year, the year before, and it was just terrible. So this is sort of a back to the drawing board kind of thing for them? It is. It's, a, it's based on Android, and oh. but they've reskinned everything. It's not like any other t Android tablet on the market. How so? So let's give it a whirl. So apps are arranged in clusters, and you can move them around, change their name, uh, change their shape, kind of like Tetris pieces. Kind of interesting, but not entirely efficient to navigate. So are those all apps on there? A lot of these are links to uh, pages in the web browser, uh, but you can download apps from the Amazon App Store. So like I, I noticed this when I was playing with it. Like I clicked on Twitter, it went to the Twitter website. I clicked on Facebook, it went to the Facebook website. And um, when I was in the browser, uh, I noticed the browser was kind of buggy. And it had, I had a hard time with like the search interface. I had a hard time uh, changing URLs, things like that. Uh, it's very esoteric. It kind of uses its own language. It does. Um, and I actually got stuck and I had to come to you for help because uh, I couldn't figure out how to get out of an app back to the home screen. Right. And so that's something different from other tablets. There's no home button or like Android normally has four buttons on the front of the device. Uh, no buttons. So what you do to get back to the home screen is a two finger swipe down from the top. I see. Uh, if you want to go to your notifications, it's two swipes from the right. And if you want to go back, it's two swipes to the left, which in this case took us back to the home screen. So this is this a new language for, uh, for tablets? I mean, I've only ever used ones with buttons. Mm -hmm. It is different. You get used to it as long as you realize that you do have to do it these two button swipes. Okay. So it's all so it's basically sort of reminiscent of like something like WebOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with yeah, the touchpad. Okay. The, the the defunct touchpad. Mm -hmm. Uh so uh, sort of a bizarre interface, uh, a little bit rough around the edges, a little bit buggy. Uh, what does this have going for it? Price? The price is good. It's three hundred dollars for the Wi Fi version, four hundred dollars for three G. Okay. It's available now. And it's a big screen. Most of the tablets we've seen that are cheaper than that are eight, seven or eight inches, it like is, the Kindle or the, yeah. the um, uh, some of the other some of the other eight and seven inch tablets that we've seen. Right. It has a 1366 by 768 display. Okay. So a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, would you buy one in place of an iPad? Probably not. <laughs> I would probably spring for the extra couple hundred bucks for the iPad, or just wait and get a Kindle Fire. Or keep it around to kill ants. Totally. <laughs> um, we're going to come back next week. Mike Isaac will be back uh, to show us some stuff that he saw down at CTIA conference in San Diego. And until then, we will see you next time on the Gadget Lab.